We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, uh, first item looks like uh, Andy Robinson. He should be there. Andy, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me okay? I can. And uh, we're going to put a five minute limit on you. Hey! That was. That was the lawyer at five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming from a politician. <laughs> it's ticking. The floor is yours. So, uh, well, speaking of the number five, I'm talking about the Fifth Amendment. Uh, as well as Section 7 of the main Constitution, uh, and it's about uh, holding grand jury in the county building. Yeah. Uh, and typically, this is just done automatically. We've been using the Superior Court space uh, for years. Uh, and due to the pandemic, obviously, we need to take uh, certain precautions, but we also, I think, need to talk uh, about when the space is going to be available. Uh, for the grand jury process. Uh, currently, uh, the uh, county building has limited uh, the access uh, to the public, and so we want to respect that. At the same time, uh, I've got these constitutional uh, obligations, and uh, one of my goals is to determine if we can have access to the superior courtroom for a grand jury session. Right now, a grand jury is scheduled for March 2nd and March 3rd. Uh, I certainly understand uh, that there are going to be concerns about safety and that, you know, obviously uh, the safety of the folks that work in the county building has to be the priority. Uh, on the other hand, we're balancing these responsibilities that government has. Uh, and so I'm trying to figure out if there's a way uh, that we can use the Superior Court building uh, for a grand jury, it probably would be both those days, but if you said to me, look, we're not comfortable with that, we just want it to be one of the days. Uh, if you said to me, we need reassurances that there's going to be screening process uh, that takes place uh, to ensure that anybody coming into the county building, you know, is, uh, we're taking whatever measures we can to make sure that they're uh, not bringing in the virus. Uh, those are the kind of things that I, I would want to talk to you about. Uh, I think uh, Julie Magoon approached you uh, on an earlier date, and understandably, uh, the uh, decision was made that, that we weren't going to be able to go into the county building. Obviously, some time has passed, but that, uh, that is what has caused me to put the call in and ask for a little bit of your time. So, I just take it from your silence that you're agreeing that silence is an acquiescence and that you just want me to set, set everything up. Uh, That's not so true. That's not true, Andy. We, okay. will, we will give you your five minutes and your time's up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lance, okay, so Lance has a comment. Lance has a comment. Uh, uh, Andy, when you guys are, when they're convening jury, uh, grand juries now, are they screening them anyway? Anybody that goes into the courthouse gets screened, and that, incur, that in, uh, includes jurors. Yeah. Now, remember the distinction. I think you folks probably have to clear in your head, but just for anybody that's part of the meeting. We're not talking about a traverse jury. We're not talking about jury trials and bringing in 120 people. We're talking about bringing in uh, a, a set, probably uh, from somewhere from 17 to 20 people, who listens to all of the felony cases and make the probable cause determination on whether or not there's sufficient evidence to go forward. So it's not the big uh, 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 process of bringing a lot of people to the courthouse. It's that limited number. But in order to do it safely, we need a space yeah. to be able to do that. And obviously, the superior courtroom is the biggest space that we're used to using and that we've had accessible to us. You know, Andy, this is Terry. I, yeah. I met with a lawyer a couple of weeks ago. We met outside in the street corner. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So the pox. You want me to hold, you want me to hold the jury outside on the street for <laughs> Well, that well, was just a thought. <laughs> well, if, 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 if you do, we'll make sure he gets chosen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I, 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 the whole secrecy component to yeah. the jury, that, yeah. you know, there, there'll be some hitch uh, on that. But there might be some constitutional right. issues. I, I think I think the courtroom set up for at least twenty people with the spacing. I don't it's know what that number 30, is. Thirty-two. Yeah, that's it. Thirty-six. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Hey, maybe uh, maybe I can plug in some things that I just want to make sure you know that I uh, consider and that I think would be easily accomplished. One, uh, I think we could limit the way the grand jurors came into the courthouse, if we could say, uh, stick, uh, pick a specific door, have them access and go directly into the courtroom by whatever stairwell is closest, and then have them leave by that same process. So even if they have to go up the stairs and through the attorney's room, we could do it that way, yep. uh, if that's the preference. So we can move, and what I was thinking is, really limit access to the courthouse to just the corridors so that the stairways and corridors to get into the, uh, the courtroom. That's the route I take. How about, how about the handicapped people? Well, uh, you know, because the question is, is that, uh, is that going to be an issue, right? Uh, oh, right. If it is, we'll figure it out. Uh, but hopefully if everybody's, uh, if it's not an issue, then we've got a system in place. Okay. So we'll, we'll make it yeah, as we go along. That's what lawyers do. Okay, then Clyde has a question. Or a comment. If, okay. you, if you had a handicap, they'd come in from the street, get on the elevator and come to the second floor. And if the non handicap can come in the end door of the courthouse and up the stairs, into the courtroom. Uh, you see, exactly. So you can designate, I, I like your thinking. Uh, that's yeah. exactly what, uh, what I think is the right way to do it. We no, designate a very specific no, room, limiting any possible exposure for folks that are <coughs> regularly working in the courthouse. Uh, and then, so follow things like Clyde is describing, you know, yeah. a very specific room right. like that. You'll have to have some uh, help on duty to do, to guide people in and out. And I think probably giving yeah. money is very down there. Come in. Well, you hold the chair. Yeah, yeah, we're still here. I guess people are not able to do it. Oh, no, no. We're not shutting you off, Andy. That was a joke. People are not able to hear. Can can Andy hear? Andy, you can hear us fine, correct? I I I lost him for a couple minutes. That was me. Okay. Uh, evidently the audience cannot hear. Nobody's there. Andy is here. I can hear you. I'm All right, Lori, Lori Pratt's on the line. She can't hear. Maybe she's having a uh, dollar turn of my own. So, uh, what, I, what I heard was Commissioner Barker was willing to serve as the guy uh, to make sure people got in and out appropriately. I thought I heard that too. Just, yeah, that's going to be a lot of running up. You, you hear it? But, uh, uh, you said you, you volunteered to be the guy. I, I didn't think I volunteered. The second is the Commissioner's Day, and this is our room now. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, well, uh, then, look, we're going on the weekend. There's a couple of things. One, uh, if you said to me, look, we just want you to do it for one day, we understand uh, that it's critical and that you got to be responsible to get these cases in, uh, we could do the third, right? Okay. And I, is that the non conflict day for your meeting? Correct. Yeah, that's that's not so, yeah. the first and the third day. I would just do the third. Okay. Okay. Even better. We would go. We would do the third. And the other thing I wanted to let you know is there's another player in this decision. It's the court system, and they currently have Lord, a designated wrong. Franklin County by court metrics, right? So this doesn't have anything to do with what the uh, the government, the state government is doing to judicial branch. Franklin County is a red zone right now. And so we can't put more than 10 people in a room. So I am asking you for permission to do this, knowing that the court still needs to be able to make a decision based on the information they have uh, on whether or not they can go forward on their own, right? So this is a sort of a two-part decision-making process. If you allow me to set something up and coordinate with uh, 
uh, doing the goon, uh, I still need the court to reach a point where they're comfortable saying it'll be safe for grand jurors to be yeah. brought in and do it out throughout the period of Okay, Andy, okay, Julie has a comment. Hi, hi Andy. Uh, Lori Pratt uh, is on the call as well. And if we can, Lori, if you can hear us, it's what? Asterisk six? Do you want her to talk? Yeah, she wants to speak, I believe. Lori, are you there? I think we've unmuted you. Can you hear me, Julie? Yes, we can. Go oh, for it. Hi, Brian. I just wanted to, and um, Andrew, I just wanted to say that um, just for our purposes, we don't have enough court marshals uh, available to have them at different doors. So the last time that we did have court over there, everybody had to go to the bottom or the front door, go to the right, they would get all their questions asked, um, at that point, and then one one person at a time would go up the elevator into the courtroom. So that's how it would have to be done. Everybody would have to go in that front door, get screened, make sure that they answer all the questions to see if they can even enter any further. Okay, no but, And what we could do on that day for employees is we would open up maybe one of the other doors so we don't have to have employees passing through the screening process for the court just for that one day. We could use one of the uh, alternative doors yeah. for employees yeah. only. We could keep it locked but have the employees use the key that day. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And that way it would just leave the lower level solely for the courts to do their screening and get them upstairs. Just, just him and Amanda would have to come in and go down instead of coming in. That's so correct. Five. And then I would assume, Andrew, that the whoever is going to be testifying would be going the same route as the other people later on during the day. Yeah. Right. There, uh, there's going to be uh, some different forms of testifying. Some folks might be retestifying remotely. Uh, and then if we have a witness coming in, we would have them go up the same route, but take them to a separate room. Uh, or we may just have them in my office testifying remotely. So we'll take care of that part of it. Okay. Right. It's okay with you, Liz? Okay with us? You want to okay, make that a motion? So and we get the third now. Yeah. Get the third. Yep. I think you have our blessing, Andy. Well, I appreciate it, gentlemen. And I do take uh, the importance of keeping everybody safe in the courthouse uh, uh, to heart. Good. And so uh, the second thing is. It may be I just wasted what I considered only to be five minutes, five minutes lawyer's time uh, of your time because it may be that the court uh, assesses what the situation, the metrics are for Franklin County to determine that it can't be done safely or that the numbers would be too great. So you've given us the uh, ability to proceed if everything else lines up. So thank you. Yeah, you're quite welcome. And I, and I believe probably that you only took 15 minutes, but you charged for an hour. <laughs> like I said, five minutes lawyer time. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit of a lot of work. And I, I will be working directly with Julie, keeping her up to date uh, on what we're learning as we go along, and then coordinate with her to make sure we're meeting the uh, county's expectations. Okay? Thank you very much, Andy. That was going to be my last. Well, thank you, gentlemen. And do you I still appreciate it? Do you still need Clyde to usher them? Or? <laughs> Uh, right now, I'll, I'll interview people uh, for the position, and we'll, we'll consider applying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. You're going to afford me. Thank you, everyone. All right. All right. We're on to new business, and the first item is the clerk's report. Um, you have the minutes of February 4, 2021 for approval. Yep. I make a motion we accept them as printed. Second it. Second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Roll call vote. Uh, Terry? Aye. Lance? Aye. Clyde? Yes. Unanimous. 3-0. Okay. Is that it for the clerk's report? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll move to the treasurer's report. Uh, on the treasurer's report, you have one UT warrant and one county warrant for approval. And also the January bank statement reconciliations are downstairs for review if you'd like to look at that. 
I have a question. Okay. We have a treasurer. Mm -hmm. Is she working any now, or what's going on with the treasurer? Yeah, yeah she's been in the office on Mondays and Tuesdays, her regular schedule. Mondays and Tuesdays, you hear that? Um, she's up, she's in the office Mondays and Tuesdays. She is, okay. I haven't seen her for a long time. I don't see her at that meeting, so that's why I wonder if she felt good if she's still working at that point. I make a motion we accept that for your report. Is there a movement and seconded? Any discussion? If say none, all those in favor? Terry. Aye. Lance. Aye. Clyde. Here. Unanimous 3-0. Thank you. Item number three, new highest for det detention center. Yes, I spoke with Doug today. He was unavailable. They are doing training at the detention center today. But they would like to present the names of Joshua, and I believe the pronunciation would be Reserve, M-E-S-E-R-V-E-Y. M-E-F. M-E-S-E-R-V-Y. For a full time corrections officer. Full time? Joshua. Yes. Yeah. M E S E R E. Like reserve or the wall. Reserve. Yeah. Yeah. What? I didn't get the Is Joshua a ferry? No, Ms. M E S E R V E Y. Reserve. Reserve. Okay. Yes. Reserve. M E X E R V E Y. V E Y, yes. Where is it from? I don't know. I don't that. know. I don't know. Okay. Was he recommended by that? Yes, they, they ran, they did the testing, they had an oral board. It's the regular procedure that we always follow internally. Yes. Okay. Yes. Make a motion. We accept that as his name, whatever his name is. Yeah, Joshua. Sorry to second move and second. Any further discussion on that motion? Saying none, all those in favor? Terry. Aye. Lance. Aye. Clyde. Aye. Three zero, thank you. And yeah. we have one other as well. Okay. Um, Wyatt, W-Y-A-T-T, -T, Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S. Uh, for a full-time corrections officer, he was part of the process this week as well. He is currently, or has been, a certified corrections officer with Somerset. And there will be a bio on uh, having him coming to work for us. And we have to pay someone that. That is correct. That's Do you know what that bio number is? Right around ten thousand, because yes. he's he's a recently certified through the academy. Yeah. What's his last name again, Joe? Haynes. H A Y N E S. Yep. Y A Y. Like okay. Make a motion. Thank you. I move we accept. Second motion. Okay. Any further discussion? In the future, they just we'll just call them guide one, guide two, guide three. Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be easier. I don't know. Maybe the name comes up. with we'll wait just a minute. <laughs> That's a relative. I know. <laughs> Uh, all those in favor of that motion? Terry. Yes. Lance. Yes. Clyde. Yes. Unanimous review. Thank you. That's it for the corrections officers. Okay. And now item number six is consideration of a draft COVID-19 paid leave policy. Yes, I have. I drafted up a, the policy you see in front of you. I did run that by all the department heads and then I sent it off to our attorney. Um, and she made some recommendations, and what you see is the final approved copy that she's recommending um, that is okay for approval today. And again, this will give basically the synopsis is this will give any employee who has not received uh, previous pay, county pay, above and beyond their sick vacation or any type of leave that they would have uh, five working days paid for by the county. With, the, with those exemptions that you see. And this is basically what we, I looked at, it looks like what we talked about last week. Exactly, I tried to just yeah, put, no, I, yep. I didn't see anything. Yep. So, you want to make a motion to I move we accept this. Check the policy. Yep. Take a moment. Okay, move and second it. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? 
Uh, Terry? Yes. Lance? Yes. Clyde? Yes. Unanimous 3 0. If I could have you sign one copy up there and I'll. What's that? Yeah, just one signed copy? Yeah. Yes, that would be fine. I got one going. <laughs> oh, you got one on this side. And actually, I'll jump ahead. I also have, while I come up to collect that, I also have, um, we amended the personnel policy, and I just needed your signatures on the yep. updated page for that. I didn't bring it last time. Now it's, we updated the personnel mm -hmm. policy to reflect the You don't need the first page, do you? Uh, I'll take it. Done that number one on miscellaneous. Okay, that ends with new business. Under old business, Julie, do you have a proposal update? Yeah, I did. Um, last Thursday, uh, Amanda, Tim, and I had a virtual meeting with Claire from uh, the Main Geo Library regarding um, the ortho imagery project. And because you had asked us to reach out to the municipalities and first responders, yeah. so we had a real nice, I think it was an hour long meeting with her. Um, what she is going to do is we have the original presentation that she prepared for us and I have sent that out to some of the municipalities that have expressed interest in it for reading Donna's article in the Sun Journal. But what we asked her to put together was a real brief two-page synopsis that we can directly get out to the municipalities, the fire department, search and rescue, really in a synopsis just briefly explain what the proposal is and um, what their costs would be to them and have them get back to us if there's interest at the municipal level yeah. and then if there is Claire would be more than willing to have another webinar where all those municipalities could call in and directly ask her the questions and then from there we can get the feedback back to you to see how much interest is out there for the for the pro um, it, project. Um, is there a way that you can I mean we saw what she was doing there but the, the, the you know, I, to be honest, I'd like to set this right down next to Google Earth. I want someone to show me the difference. Yeah, you want to see the product. I want to see it. Yeah. I bet we could arrange that. I think yeah, it's a great idea. Because uh, I, I did ask the yeah, I see that question. Yeah, yeah, and she I, answered I, I, that. They're trying to explain it, but I'm like, I think, I mean, I I think when I was looking at those papers, right, yeah. and I'm thinking, this doesn't look any different to me. And, um, and then there's the issue of um, how often you have to buy it, which is now I have heard from doing people since so I am gonna make a few phone calls back, right. but I yep. I would like to you know, certainly look into it a little more. I don't know what, whether that changes or anything or not, but I, I do want to know information. So um, no I think that's a really good great idea, Lance, and we can see if we can have some. What, what are they using now? Pardon me? I mean like okay, so someone calls up surveyors users, right? Well what are they using right now? I, I don't know yet. You don't have it, so they use it <laughs> them, right? I would imagine they're using Google, Google Earth. Most of the calls that I receive are from woodcutters. Yeah. Foresters. And those people, I see whether it be advantageous to them. I don't see it with the fire departments because, and I don't understand why, but when I, 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 I asked if they had GPS in their vehicles and their trucks, and they said no. 
It, and what, what I'm hearing is the answer to the GPS is the GPS gives you a physical location. What the advantages they say to when you get this new system up and running in the, in the dispatch, in the CAD system, is yeah, you know where the GPS, everybody can agree maybe the GPS coordinate is correct, yeah. but if you're trying to facilitate the rescue, how do you get there? So it, it's very useful for those people to use that tool to go in, look at the area and say, well, if we're not familiar with it, it's out behind Sugarloaf somewhere, yeah. how can we easily get there? What are we going to need for equipment? Are we going to need an ATV? So we're going to have to be on foot. The district three has a lot of lumbermen, you're right. And there's a lot of wooded area. Yeah, I can see where your fire pan could use them because it would you could pinpoint where the fire was from this from the map. Well, what, what do you mean by pinpoint? Uh, <coughs> and it would tell them just what they had kept they have for equipment and stuff. And I talked to a couple of fire chiefs. And they were for it. They said, boy, that would help us a lot. Especially where we get so many woods in, in a kind of forest fire. And we had one this, this year that they couldn't find, didn't know right where it was, so the airplane flew over and found the smoke. So if the firemen had that, if the town had that directional map, they could pinpoint it themselves well that we were playing it. Many, 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 many years ago, we had spotters on mountains, yeah. and that was really efficient. Yeah. And they stopped all of that right. because of the airplanes. Now they want us to do it. It's not going to be in real time. Yeah. Time. No, that's right. Yeah. It's almost like you're saying that they can see the smoke. They can't see the smoke on that. No. No. So, anyway, I'm, I'm interested in it. Uh, so, keep it. In, in clarification, too, and I, I don't know if this was clear because it wasn't clear to me until we spoke again with Claire after the commissioner's yeah. meeting. Is in order for the municipalities to even participate, at a bare minimum, we have to do the UT portion. If the county doesn't agree to do the UT, then there's no option there for the municipality because, as she said, it's an economy of scale where the UT is half of the county geographically. It just wouldn't pay for them to go up and maybe fly Jay or Pierre Bassett or Rangeley. Oh, right. It wouldn't be cost efficient. The only thing I think the, the part about it, it seems to me that if you are making the commitment to it, right, you are in fact making the commitment to update it every what was it, two years? No, I don't believe that was I don't I don't think they have from talking with Claire and we can try to get some answers to that. I think it went around six years old, right? That is correct. We, we, as you can see, we did participate. We started to uh, put aside money back in 2014, and five yeah. years ago, I believe, it was yeah. when we made the payment. So it looks like they have been on a five year rotation. Now. Okay, because once again, I'm not, I, I play with Google Earth all the time. Right? I know that they have updated my house every five or six years. I know that because it's like, oh, okay, that, that one's been cut now, other cut like the year. You know, in fact, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember, I used to park that over there, that's when it was parked, right? So, if, if that is, so that's why I'm having this issue with, like, well, what's the big difference here? Because it seems to me one of the things they say is it's, it's about um, how, you know, recent, right? That's one of the comments. But if they're not updating every five years, every five years I know that the last three times they've done that on Google Earth, they've done it three times, and I think about 11 years. Because I can see it in my hand. So that's, that's my issue. I don't know. It's like, okay, so if, if you mind. And I, and I guess yeah. the point that Claire was trying to make in her email, and I, I hate to try to speak for somebody, but I think she, when she speaks to Google Earth is you're not, you don't know for sure where that imagery is coming from. And it doesn't show, according to her, it doesn't, you don't really know when that was actually, there's nothing on Google Earth that tells you when that particular image you're looking at was actually what day? shot. What day? Yeah. So that would be a yeah. perfect example, because if we could see both of those at the same time. Yeah, I, I just like Oh, I, I think, I'm like, I would too, I'm kind yeah, of curious. I, mean, I can zoom down, I look for yep. fishing yep. places, I find yep. places, yellow, and I do the same. And, and I do know that there is a, like a, like, some people have it where you can turn them out. I don't know. Yeah, my boy. Anyway, I don't. Know. But it would be nice to continue the dialogue and, and at least set these up side by side. Yeah, I think that would be current. I'll see what we can do. I think that's you know, currently what's happening. I mean, if right. it's, 
you know, see the differences. It, when I look at the pictures, it doesn't look like, you know, land boundary or anything to me, did it to you? No, we'll see. I mean, it doesn't look like, you know, it's just new and then I'll right. questions. Okay. Sure. And I did, I did give you hard copies of all the letters of support that have yeah. come in yeah. from the state agencies, some of the fire departments, etc. So yeah. trying to keep you guys just up to speed on that. So. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I'm done. Any further old business? Anyone? Okay, we'll move to miscellaneous. We've already completed number one. So number two, request the whole commissioners meeting via Zoom. Yeah, we keep having requests from people that would like to have the meeting via Zoom versus fast conferencing. I've tried to explain, I think, Clyde, you don't even have the ability to Zoom from your home, correct? If you had to stay home for any reason, Zoom would not be a viable no. resource for you. So that's why we are using vast conferencing and I've tried to explain that. I understand it's hard to hear. I, maybe Zoom is better. I don't know. Jim, you're the tech guy. Well, right? we'd have to get microphones for these guys. Uh, you're talking about just setting a laptop. That's what I'm going to do it. Yeah. We'd have to get a camera, microphones. Uh, well, they're not going to be any better than what they get now. And I, and I guess the other thing we need to think is how long are we going to be in? I mean, we have this, too. Look. Yeah. Yes. Channel 11. We, yes. we get Channel 11. No, one more of them. It, yeah. it, they get it on. The only problem is that I don't, I don't know when Channel 11 puts it on the air. I can't. I haven't been able to find that out yet. I haven't seen one. It goes on their Facebook. But it's on. Channel. It's on the news, I think, or something. But I don't know. I'm pretty sure you can stream it live. Yes, you can. There must be a program. You can stream it live, or you can watch well, it on Facebook. We've, we've done. We've got it in by the telephone. We come in person. We sit here. We get it on channel eleven. What else can we do and to help? These people that want to know what's going on. And, and how many telephone calls do we get? We also have. Right well, now you have one, two, three, four, five people on. Five people today? Yeah, one, one. One. one of them is Richard Ward and one's Nick Thomas, so I guess you get three people. I'm not coming there. The date don't come. You don't count that? Yeah, I count. <laughs> and we also have a written copy of uh, yeah. our meeting so they can read those and respond we, later. And I can also, we record the meeting, it's recorded by them. I can send people transcripts. I mean, not the whole, yeah. not transcripts, but a recording of the meeting. Okay, I think. Like I said, we can do Zoom, but we're going to buy some equipment, yeah. microphones. Yeah. And I still can't can't even hear any better. Correct. That's the expense. The so acoustics are bad enough in here. And how long are we going to have to do it? That's, That's the other thing. How long are we going to be? I mean, do probably do it the rest of the year, but then after that, what do we do with all that equipment? You take it home, Clark. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got enough stuff on. Uh, but I, I, I say no. Okay. No, I'm just doing due diligence and putting it on the agenda. And yeah, I think we've done it. I think we try to do the best we can. Yeah. I agree. Is that it? I have one miscellaneous when you are ready. Um, uh, we had previously had the Teamsters grievance scheduled for today. Um, and due to the, I mean for yesterday, but due to the storm and travel issues. Um, I was going to try to reschedule it for our March 2nd meeting, but the business agent is unavailable. He is available next Tuesday um, if you wanted to have a special meeting just to hear the grievance. Uh, Julie, I didn't understand who it was. I wanted to see it. Okay, it's, it's a grievance hearing from, from the union. Oh, the grievance hearing? Yes, correct. We had to reschedule that. He's okay. not available to come at our next regularly scheduled meeting on March 2nd. But he is available next Tuesday if he wanted to do a special meeting just to hear the grievance, which will be in a That's the 23rd? Correct, okay. yes. And again, it would be in the afternoon? Yep, 3 o'clock. Because I'm tied up. I've got to get my. Oh, good. good. Down in Augusta, so. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. It shouldn't take that long, I think. Okay. Oh. Can you do it here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Three, three o'clock. Three o'clock. I will three send them an email and let them know that we will. On the 23rd? Yep, we'll be right up here. And that will be an executive session. We'll open a regular meeting and then go into executive to hear it. Anything else? Then I uh, will a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Okay. Any discussion on that? All in favor of that? Terry? Yes. Lance? Yes. Clyde? Yes. Unanimous, Thank you.